Oh, very good, very good. So I can answer Brother First Last's question. Brother First Last, the awesome brother, also uh, watches us regularly, and uh, he's he's talking, he's asking about uh, uh, this particular diagram that does work, and I do know something about this because we did, uh, we were one of them that published this early on. This is related to um, uh, Hubbard's coil, but it's, it's also Hendershot, but there was another guy around World War II uh, Hendershot was before World War II, and so was Hubbard. Uh, but uh, and they were both with the ministry. And there's another guy, Kohler, Hans Kohler. So this is related to Hans Hans Kohler's work, and it's also related to the um, the generator that the Egyptians used that we gave away. Uh, that one, and again, that's ancient Egypt. Egypt used to be called uh, Kismet, which meant advanced technology. That people think it means chemistry. It's where we get our chemistry and alchemy words from. Uh, but it meant advanced technology is what it meant. This is uh, similar to, those. it's related to those devices, and the easiest of those three to build that I just mentioned is going to be the one that the Egyptians used, which uh, uh, we did discuss that. So if you can find the program, we did tell you how to do that back, uh, oh, I think it was a year ago, maybe a year and a half ago now. Uh, that was one of the last, most recent giveaways that we did on technology. And uh, again, ancient Egypt had power, and they did broadcast power, and they did have receivers all over. Uh, so that's what the technology was. And they did give it to other kingdoms as well, and that's what the technology was. But this one is related, but it's not the same. And uh, here it shows, it's a, it's a, this is like a piece of that, basically. Here it shows a capacitor on both, a, one capacitor plate on one side of a magnet, another capacitor plate on the other side of the magnet. What they're not showing you is the magnet needs to be pretty thin, so that, and the magnet needs to be non-conductive. And... Uh, so the capacitor, so the magnet itself serves as the dielectric of the of the capacitor. These are plates, so that's one capacitor with a magnet. So it's a capacitor with a magnet is the dielectric. And if you charge this, uh, if you charge this, you can get uh, continuously as you start to drain it. You do it at low low, you know, drain it slowly. You can get continuous power off of the thing, but the energy is dominant energy, and so it's not, uh, it fluctuates, it's not, uh, you have to convert it, you have to store it in a regular capacitor, and that needs to be part of, uh, with diodes, uh, part of a, of a inductor type circuit that you could charge and discharge a capacitor or two capacitors flip-flop. Uh, into a uh, into a run it through a transformer, and then you get electricity out the other side. So the brother's question is: If two capacitors, okay, this is called the pointing energy generator. Which uh, again, yeah. Anyway, if two capacitors are charged at 120 volts and 60 cycles and placed at 90 degrees near a magnet, will the energy keep flowing? No. The answer is no. So uh, unfortunately, if it was that simple, everybody would already be doing it, brother. But uh, the second question, can you get a magnet to resonate at 60 cycles? So if you place two capacitors at right angles charge, you, well, let's just take the first part of that. Can you get a magnet to resonate at 60 cycles? Yes. Uh, you, it's pulsating DC at 60 cycles, and these are dominant energy magnets. You, uh, to get them to flip polarity, it's possible. I haven't seen that yet, but I do have some theories on how to do that. Uh, again, with enough funding, almost anything can be accomplished. So you can get magnets to, to flip. 60 cycle now whether you want to call that resonance or not uh, that's another question but uh, anyway and then it says can you get them to resonate at 60 cycle so that if you place two capacitors at a right angle and charge with 120 volts and 120 volts at 60 ci cycles will continue no unfortunately it doesn't work that way again the uh, this is one capacitor it's not two capacitors uh, and you cannot put them on both sides of a magnet but if you want to study Hans Kohler's work it's the closest thing to this, and it does, his work did work. And you can study uh, Hubbard coil, and you can study uh, uh, Hendershot as well. And uh, their their such systems do work, and they are related to this, and as well as the uh, the Egyptian uh, device that we gave away uh, to broadcast energy. And the receivers are very similar to the transmitters um, on those. So, hope that answered your question, brother. Uh, first last. Uh, he says, a uh, question for Sir T, is an electrolytic capacitor already an organ accumulator? It is a poor one um, because it doesn't usually use organic and organic materials anymore. Some of the old days they used beeswax, but nowadays it's, uh, 
it's all you know just plastic and metal so it's a very poor one uh, and then he asked if i put a thousand of them in series will it create a stronger organ field a strong organ field the strongest fields are um uh, you know, about three or four layers. You really, you can go more, and you might get eventually get it doubled. But it's a case of diminishing return. If you're building an organ blanket or an organ accumulator, uh, you your strongest fields are well for practical. Strongest practical construction is three or four layers of organic and inorganic materials. Uh, some stuff that's healthy. Make sure you stick with healthy stuff for your you know no you know no toxic chemicals, no poisons, no toxins, and um, and organic and inorganic. So organic might be, you know, like cotton or wax, beeswax. It has to be beeswax. It can't be fake wax. Um, that might be organic. Inorganic might be, um, you know, copper foil. You can use aluminum foil. It's not as good as copper. It's, it's less, uh, in other words, aluminum has some toxic substances in it. Uh, and uh, anyway, and you do three layers of that. That's the high, three or four is most practical. You can, if you go up to 12, you, you'll get, or maybe like 20, you'll get maybe double what you got with four, about 20, but it's not really practical to do that many. It might even take 100 to get that way. It's a case of diminishing return. Uh, but uh, yeah, most capacitors do not have any organic material in there. Uh, 